Hey everyone, Joel Hansen here, and it is Q&A time. So I'm just gonna start by saying thank you to everybody who dropped me questions. The post is on my YouTube community tab. We got over 100 questions. I will say, you guys actually asked really good questions this time. There's a lot of new questions today, so that's super, super cool. So this is gonna be generally uncut. I'm just gonna basically go through this. You'll experience it as I do. You'll see my raw reaction. And if it is a good question, I may spend a little bit more time on it. So I'm like I said, some of these are a really good question. Yeah, let's dive into it. <clears throat> when are you gonna have to eat off with Beard Meets Food? I already have done challenge with them. You can find it on my challenge or my channel. Just go type in Beard Meets Food. When are we getting married? I didn't get a proposal yet. I've seen a couple of videos of you when you choked. Have you ever choked so bad that you're super worried you weren't going to clear it? Yes. Um, when I choked at the King of Donaire contest and when I choked at the Shula Burger in Miami, I thought I was going to die. Like, just being honest, like, you realize I'm going to, you're like, I'm going to die. YOLO. Literally. Uh, would you make an OnlyFans? Sure. That doesn't mean I would post nude pictures. You can put whatever you want on OnlyFans, but definitely I'd make an OnlyFans if people wanted to see that for some reason. With the calories you take in, does it benefit you in the gym or decrease your energy? It actually has caused me to lose all of my gains and a significant amount of muscle because every time you gain fat, you to diet it off, you will lose muscle. It is absolutely impossible to lose fat and not lose muscle without high amounts of drugs. I'm not on drugs. I've lost all my gains from dieting, essentially. Um, although, otherwise, I don't find it affecting my energy at all. Do you feel full after eating a normal meal? No. What's the most calories you've consumed in a day? <clears throat> I, I mean, I, there's times I've never really like estimated it, but definitely, uh, definitely, I'd say a couple times, I've probably been about that 30,000 calorie range. One of them off the top of my head would be like, when I was in Vegas, I ate the big, um, you know, octuple bypass burger, which is 20,000 calories, and then I went and did a pizza challenge. So, like, that day, I absolutely ate minimum 25, 26,000 calories, et cetera, et cetera. But there's definitely been a few days where I've probably done 30-ish thousand. I don't know how much more. After all what's happening right now, what is the one thing you want to do first? Um, I'd love to go to restaurants, and specifically, I want to go to the southern United States. I'm starting my travels, though. A couple years ago, competitive videos were at six to eight pounds. Now all videos promise 11 to 16. I don't think they do. That's, I don't think all videos promise 11 to 16. There's not very many people on earth who can eat even eight pounds or 10 pounds. Um, do you think professional eaters should weigh their food? It might ensure that restaurants don't load a challenge and mean that video collaborations are fair. I think yes and no. Like, I mean, I know I get often asked by some individuals to be like, weigh your food. And whenever I do, I do. Like I just did a, a video uh, here, you guys will see it with some fried chicken, fried chicken. And I weighed it because like, oh, I was actually at home and I have a scale. Whereas like when I travel, I usually have my one little bag. I travel with one little bag. I don't even have room to fit multiple pairs of shoes. I don't have, I barely have room for like my laptop. You know, I have bring like maybe a pair of, like maybe an extra pair of pants plus the one I'm wearing plus like two shirts, like extra to what I'm wearing. So like, I know myself, I couldn't bring a, a scale around with me often to restaurants, but and, and the, the truth of the matter is there's been so many times where restaurants, you know, if they bring you out a challenge, which is supposed to be five pounds and it's visibly bigger. They're just like, it is what it is. So I don't think it would change anything from a restaurant perspective because the ones that are like legit about the weight, they'll, they're legit about it. If that makes sense, they're very consistent, but any restaurants which have these big variations, they don't care. Even if they, you weighed it and it was like 10 pounds, they advertised it as two, they wouldn't care. Um, in regards to online individuals, well, this is it, right? Even honestly, the people that, like majority of people on YouTube are very honest. 
or like they give a rough estimate. Like there's been times I've gone to a restaurant do like a menu challenge and I like, I use my best judgment. I mean, maybe I'll call it 10 pounds. It might, maybe it's 11, maybe it's 12, maybe it's nine. You know, we use your best judgment, but there definitely are some people on YouTube who fake videos and that I'm not a fan of just because it creates abnormal and unrealistic expectations for individuals like yourself. But just like all sports, just like it was, you know, not until, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago that somebody ran a five minute mile and now they run miles in like what, I don't know, three, four minutes. So just like all sports are progressing, you know, people are getting more competitive. There's more people on earth. That's kind of why you see that number going up. Um, before Kobayashi stepped on stage, the record at Nathan's was something like 26 or 27 hot dogs. Kobayashi, why he got so famous is because he doubled it. He took it, you know, from like, let's say 26 to 50. That's how he got his fame. And now today they're up at like, you know, 74. What's it like for every female fan want to marry you? <laughs> uh, I don't think they do. Uh, but seriously, what is your death row meal request? Good Texas barbecue, tropical fruits, and candy and chocolate and dessert. How many years has your name been Joel? Long time. So when you win challenges and the food is free, do you, tip, do you leave a large tip for service? Uh, I mean, we tip. Like, but I do like a large tip to find large. Like, I mean, I've been places where they've snubbed me on the food challenge. I've gotten horrible service. I'm not just going to give them, you know, again, it depends what you find is large. I mean, you still, I still leave something like I tip, I tip appropriately to the service. And generally it's probably maybe a little bit more generous because it's free, maybe, but like, it depends. I mean, you tip according to service, right? I don't want to, I won't, I don't, I'm not going to generally say I leave a large amount because again, like there's times where you don't want to leave anything. Um, do you normally eat that much food or not recording? What does your regular plate look like? Is it more than the average person? So you can find, I believe I have two full days of eating on my YouTube uh, page. You'll like, it's very, you know, I eat the same macronutrients every day. The foods just change. So it's pretty consistent. I mean, I eat more than the average person, but like, I don't sit down and eat a 10 pound meal. I, I never do that, you know, just at home, like nothing like that. But yeah, definitely check out those uh, full day eating videos. How and when did you know that you could eat an entire restaurant? Uh, I mean, I always like to eat and through a period of time, I feel like I answered this question recently, but through a period of time, I kind of got used to eating very large portions with bodybuilding, powerlifting kind of thing. Um, and then it just kind of like, I like to eat. I kind of went through an extended period of time, like a couple years of eating a lot to then being like, I'm going to try a food challenge. And then I've progressed it there with training. So I hope that answers. Um, on a scale of Big Macs, what is the max from Big Macs you could eat? I really don't know. That's a great question. I think they're about half a pound each. So like, I don't know. The other thing too is all foods sit so differently. Like just cause I've eaten 20 pounds of ice cream does not mean I can eat 20 pounds of Big Macs. Absolutely not. Um, and you know, the, like the other day I did a challenge. I probably ate like eight or nine or 10 pounds of food and I was dying. Whereas before I've eaten 12 and I felt fine. Like it really just depends. Are there any foods you won't eat and are allergic to? Also, when you do a challenge, do you eat anything else for the day? Um, sometimes vegetables, if they're available, because you need your fiber, you gotta keep things moving, you don't want that not to move. And um, there's nothing I'm allergic to. I do have a bit of a dairy intolerance, which has greatly improved, so much so that I don't really know if I'd call it a dairy intolerance anymore, because uh, it was uh, self-inflicted previously. And then, so I don't know, uh, foods I won't eat. I don't want to eat blue. Do you often feel I'll never eat that again for the rest of my life after a challenge? There has been a couple times where 
foods have been ruined for me, generally it's when it's just like a mass quantity of something. After I did the French toast challenge, I definitely felt like I'd never want to see bread or apples again, but I love both those things normally. And I was able to eat them, you know, well really the next day, but a couple days later, but I didn't appreciate them the same, at least for a while. Like now I appreciate them. Uh, but like every time I've eaten pancakes in the last two years, which is twice I've ruined them. So yes. It does very much happen. What are your hobbies and what you do when you're not editing and making YouTube content? Um, I hang out with friends a little bit and I travel and then make YouTube. That's really about it. Uh, you know, then like I'll use an example. I literally, t I didn't even realize this, but to just basically, so not the, the videos were uploaded to YouTube, but to create the uh, titles, to create the thumbnails, to create the descriptions, to create the tags, and set all that up to like schedule to be released for six videos, maybe seven, I think six videos, it took me four hours. Like I'm like literally like, I'm talking like sit down, didn't leave, didn't get back up, and then like didn't realize that like, oh my gosh, four hours went by, which I'm kind of pee off that it took four hours because I, wanted to do more with my day, but like, I didn't even realize it was four hours. So like I re when I say like I put, you know, 20 to 30 hours a week onto YouTube, that's legit. Like it really is legit. Um, there's of course weeks where it's been more, been less. Right now we don't have much content to edit. It's probably been less, but like I just put four hours in accidentally. Ugh, crazy. If you weren't doing YouTube and competitive eating, what else were you doing? What are your other passions? So again, I used to really be into the gym. It was kind of like, because I got a whole bunch of significant injuries that I couldn't uh, weight lift the way I wanted to, which is kind of how I got it into doing competitive eating because that was kind of where I directed my, call it competitive-ish nature inside. It says, what's it like to be recognized by people who love your challenge? Or maybe she's, or who love your channel, or maybe she's saying that differently. Um, what is it like to be recognized by people? Well, so I would say, I mean, it definitely depends, but I definitely get, I'm out in, out in public and I get recognized for sure a couple times a month. Um, and honestly, I would say it makes me act more, I always feel like, like I have to act, I have to watch my actions closer in public. Now it's not like I'm out doing, you know, inappropriate things, et cetera, et cetera. But even more so, it definitely makes me just, I act a little bit more responsibly and know that some people may be watching me who know me. Would you ever try a 100,000 calorie challenge? Have you ever thought of it? So I've never thought of it. And anybody who's claimed to a 100,000 calorie challenge has faked it, 100% guarantee. Maybe if they did it over like the span of maybe four or five days, I might believe it but I'd still be super hesitant. But I know there's been a couple people who've claimed to do either like, you know, 100,000 calories in, I don't know, let's say two days or three days, even four days, I really think is so unlikely. A lot of people fake those videos and that's where we get these unrealistic expectations on YouTube from. Um, even a lot of people that try to do like 50,000 calorie videos, et cetera, they're faking them. Like there's very few people on earth that I believe has actually consumed 50,000 calories in one day um, one person I know that did it for sure was, let's, let's say an example of Molly Schuyler. The reason why, because she drank two gallons of oil in a couple minutes, which equated to 60,000 calories. Nobody else is doing this. So no, cause I thought hundred thousand calories. I mean, again, unless you want to space that over weeks, but it's just, it's not realistic and it's not real. How many years of competition do you have left in you before you move on to the next chapter? That's a great question. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'll stick to this for a while as long as I enjoy it. That's kind of it. I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it, but I do enjoy it. And yeah, so we'll find out. How long have you been doing YouTube? Does it pay off? And what advice could you give me? So I've been doing YouTube now for, uh, I think theoretically, I. I think you could probably say just over two years. Like, I mean, I technically created my channel probably about two and a half years ago, but I mean, I didn't post any real videos for a couple months, if any. At least, at least, 
at least a couple months. So let's say two years, you know. Um, tips I would say, well, so here's, a, I'll take a step back. What do you mean pay off? So I'll use an example. I've had friends that have made YouTube accounts and they have 50 subscribers and they continue to post content because they love it. They just love what they're doing. They very much enjoyed making the YouTube videos. They very much enjoy doing, you know, whatever they're videoing. Like they have a passion to do it. And so it is their passion and they're just so excited to share that with the world that even if they only have 50 subscribers and maybe two views on their video, it's still worth it for them because they love doing it. They're, they're doing anyone to share with the world. That's the right reason to get into YouTube and that's how you'll succeed. I've then had a friend or two that has said, I'm going to get into YouTube. I'm going to get big and famous. They've invested hundreds or thousands of dollars into it. Just like that. Like I'm talking like no channel thousand bucks, which is a big move in my opinion. To which then literally like a couple weeks later, like, man, this is a lot of work. And then after putting out two videos, they stopped. Uh, one individual I know even legitimately had some really good success. Like, I mean, off of maybe two or three videos, over a thousand subscribers. That's way better success than I had. It took me six months to even get a hundred subscribers. And, but it all comes back to the right reasons. Like the chance of you, you know, putting up one or two videos, maybe even three videos or four videos and making it big, just hitting it off, like becoming, I don't know, get a million subscribers, going viral. It's probably pretty slim. You know, you probably should almost equally, I'm not gonna recommend buying lottery tickets, but you could probably, you know, probably about the same odds in all reality, buying lottery tickets, just, you know, going viral off YouTube in like a couple videos. So make a long story short, I don't know what you mean by payoff. Um, I mean, it takes a lot of time. Like I said, I'm putting 30 plus hours a week on probably, let's say 30 hours a week on average into YouTube. The advice I would give, um, you got to enjoy it. Like I said, you got to enjoy it. And I do enjoy it. I like what I do. I like sharing this content and I like to do my kind of eating endeavors. So as long as you like it, you'll enjoy it. Um, yeah, that's about it. I would say, uh, you know, if you're getting started, make sure you create the best quality content you can just to start. But like I started on my phone, I'd recommend starting on a phone. If you're brand new, you want to get into YouTube, I really wouldn't recommend buying a camera until you at least have a little bit of an you know, established base um, to, to basically long enough to make sure that it's something you want to do. Besides that, um, collaborate with people when you can, uh, use effective search terms and you can do a lot of, do a lot of research. I've done a lot of research, do a lot of research into how to basically better your growth, your channel, etc. Are you happy with where you are in life? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, what's the quickest way to lose weight? That's not a real answer because that's too broad. I mean, I can say diet or as a broad answer. Um, what's something you've eaten that you would never eat again? Um, I had pickled herring. I really wasn't a big fan and I didn't, I don't really like liver. I mean, yeah, I just, I wouldn't purposely eat those again. How long does it take for your stomach to digest all the food and return to normal? So, I mean, do you mean like how long does it take for your stomach, your food to empty out of your stomach? It depends on the type of food. Like something like, I don't know, ice cream or whatever is going to, you know, vacate your stomach a lot quicker and move through your intestinal tract a lot quicker than if you, it's like meats. Like meats stay forever in your stomach. Forever. What are some new or haven't done yet food challenges that you'd love to try? Um, I don't really know. I don't know. I just kind of take it as it comes. Uh, but I definitely want to get down to the southern United States. What are the hardest eating challenges you've done? You have a video. I mean, it's probably released by the time Q&A releases. But there's a video I just made talking about my hardest food challenges and time that I have been cheated by restaurants. As a competitive eater, what's more important to someone's career to make money, eating fast 
or volume? Both. If you're actually talking like legit competitive eaters in competition, you have to have both. When are you going to do a seafood fest or feast? Um, when the opportunity arises. What is the single best dining experience you've ever had? Ooh, that is so tough. Um, I'll give you a couple of the best off the top of my head. Um, Adamson Barbecue in Toronto, best brisket I've ever had. Uh, I can give you my barbecue tops. Um, uh, best beef ribs I've ever had, Roland Smoke in uh, Las Vegas. Best pork ribs I've ever had would be Robbie's Burger Bar and Smokehouse in Montreal. Uh, best burnt ends I've had would be, but please note, I haven't tried all necessarily every single meat at all these places. Um, and then like, I know a couple other um, restaurants I really liked. I was recently at a place called Taco Embassy in Niagara Falls or St. Catharines. You guys don't realize how exceptional of a meal that was. That was exceptional. Uh, one of the best steaks I've ever had or the best steak was at a place called the Five Fisherman in Halifax. It was a uh, bone in 45 day aged ribeye, like, duh, so good. Um, will you come to Crescent City, California? I have no clue where that is, but maybe. When you go do a video with LA Beast, I'd love to do it when the opportunity arises. I can only eat five plates at a buffet. Could I still be a competitive eater? Um, I mean, I'm going to release a, I am working on a series and I will can release it eventually of how to be a eater, how to eat. It's going to be called, it's going to be released on my Patreon. I mean, the answer is yes, essentially, but I'd never encourage anybody to become a competitive eater. But yeah, theoretically, for sure. Anything you got to do, you just got to work at it. Um, but if you are an individual who is used to eating large quantities of food for a various reason, let's say you were an athlete, you're going to be, it's going to be that much easier to move that way. Um... What are the best foods for training stomach capacity? Uh, again, find that question in my series when it comes out. Um, but I mean, relatively frequently. Again, not that I'd recommend it. How old were you when you started noticing you could eat more than others? Uh, definitely like 16, 17 for sure. But probably a bit before that. Like I just never had a reason to, I guess. Um, how do you eat so fast without getting the hiccups? Well, I've never gotten the hiccups from eating fast necessarily. Generally, it's when you swallow something awkwardly. Because the uh, hiccups is when your diaphragm is contracting. So it's like when you have a discombobulation between, you know, the, uh, your diaphragm normally contracting and you're talking, right? When you get those spontaneous contractions, when it breaks that rhythm, that's when you have hiccups. So essentially, if you're getting hiccups, again, I'm kind of assuming that you're maybe trying to eat and swallow and breathe at the same time, something that causes a disruption in your normal breathing <clears throat> and or diaphragm contraction. Um, I mean, the only time I think I ever really get hiccups from consuming something, I mean, there's all, not, that's a lie. I've swallowed something weird sometimes, but drinking probably more so. Like if I take a sip of water, sometimes a weird way. I think it's like when you're trying to swallow and breathe at the same time, that's what happens. We need a Matt Stoney collab where you team up and eat a whole buffet. I tell you what, man, if you can make it work, I'd love to do it. How would you like to see your channel grow in the next year? Whew, that's such a great question. Uh, I mean, I've literally been so thankful for the growth that has happened. I feel absolutely blessed, honored to be acquainted with all of you. Uh, I just hope it continues to grow and I get to continue to meet awesome people like all of you watching. When are you going to do a 24 hour ch eating challenge? Anything you see? Um, never. Like, I don't know. I've never thought, I've never thought of something like that. Uh, I don't know how that would really work. I mean, I basically just only look at what I wanted to eat then, I guess. Like, I don't like it's, um, <laughs> how do you prepare for an eating contest? What do you do before a contest? I don't do much at this point, um, but I'm but I'm used to it, right? So again, I'm going to touch on this in my Patreon series. I will be releasing, um, but you know, just make sure you're kind of emptied out, you're ready to rock, and yeah. Uh, 
what is, do you have a favorite food you always love to eat and don't get tired of it? Barbecue. Good barbecue. Big difference. Um, for someone with a huge following, I don't have that big a following. Um, how many hours a week a day does it take you to reply to comments or social media combined? You always answer comments, which is brilliant, but it's got to take many hours. Um, so, I like in all reality, when I upload a video, I basically do have to devote the next few hours to more or less answering questions. Um, so, like a lot. <laughs> Uh, definitely a few hours um, and that's the best time to get me after like immediately after my upload so my uploads generally go up at about 6 about about 6 15 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays Thursdays and Saturdays if you that's the best time to get me when I'm most uh, diligent to identify and respond to comments um, do you get any digestive upsets after competitive eating uh, I mean, there's definitely times after I've eaten something large where it doesn't feel good. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, Matt says, what's up, Joel? Not too much, man. Got a, got a mustache with my good friend Matt Gino from Michigan. Um, going to start some traveling, hoping the land border opens up soon. How many toilets do you go through in a year? <laughs> uh, I've never, I don't think I've ever really broken one. Do I have a subscriber goal by the end of the year? I mean, not really. I just want to kind of see. I, I want the growth. You know, I obviously want the growth to continue. I get to meet more people. I get more experiences, so I can provide you better uh, materials. But, you know, has any competition gave you the bubble guts? Uh, one time after a eating event, I literally uh, almost slash half like crapped my pants like does that count <laughs> um hi joel uh, all right that's not a comment or not a question what's your favorite challenge been so far i can't it's not it's it's too hard to pick one because sometimes like there's some i have great memories of just because of the experience like the restaurant and the staff were so great and there's other ones that i enjoyed because the food was great um, and my least favorite, uh, actually, again, if it's not already out, probably the hardest slash worst, the, the, the video, the hardest slash cheated challenges, I'd say probably my least favorite are in that video. Will you come to Winnipeg? I'm not against it. Just got to give the opportunity to rise. You could have gone for modeling, but you chose competitive eating. Is there a reason? Um, so you know you're kind of making an assumption so I did I'd say a good year like a good year of modeling and a little bit more but so I'm 5'11 no real no real legitimate modeling agency will essentially like and when I say real I mean like very well established they're not asking for weird fees etc they generally won't look at you unless you're six feet. So honestly, with that one inch, and I'm not kidding, I could, if I could go back and count the times a message I was contacted by an agency, which was like a legit agency, and they're like, oh my gosh, like, hi, I'm this. What's your basically like height and weight, for example? And as soon as I would say, I'm 5'11", they'd be, oh, shucks, like, sorry, we're looking for somebody like six, it's, I think it's like six feet to six, four for a man and then a girl like a, a lady model is i think it's five eight to six feet something like that um so yeah like i mean i so there's like that that caliber of modeling with like a lot of agents now i did get opportunities and options to get kind of like i'm gonna say less legitimate or less quality agents but those have never been worth it um I, the modeling you know I have done, I very much enjoyed it. And that's kind of the idea of like the independent modeling, we can call it, which I loved. And if I lived right in the city of Toronto, I would have been able to expand a bit more on it. And I wasn't busy. I didn't have co uh, prior commitments. So it's something that like, you know, to define like you, you could have 
gone for modeling. You know, it's it there's it, with a limit capa limited capacity in all reality. Like I said, literally because of that one inch in my height. So it's something I still, uh, you know, more recently I've done. I only really one photo shoot in 2020. I've only done a couple in 2019. And I've done a little bit more of the acting side. I'd like to give that in a little bit more because I do love to kind of perform for people. And uh, I do like modeling in general. And I think it's something maybe I'll come back to a little bit. But it's hard to, honestly, it's hard to be a male model, a fitness model, with, honestly, without doing like steroids, like drugs. 99.9% um, .9 of the individuals out there are on steroids or drugs. And just because they're not big or massive doesn't mean they're on steroids or drugs. Look up Ziz, Z-Y-Z-Z. -Z -Z. This gentleman was not overly large. He was on copious amounts of steroids just to keep him lean. And then it's like trying to keep, stay lean and not lose all your muscle gains. Again, as a natural, is basically impossible. So unless you want to go to the dark side and, and use steroids, being a male, male model is actually very hard, very difficult. So again, summarize, I could pursue the modeling more, but and I did enjoy it, but it's it's hard, and I like the eating. So I kind of just go where my interest, I'm going where my interests are. How many calories do you eat in a day when you're not competitively eating? Uh, today I probably consumed, or I will probably consume maybe like 2,400. Yeah, ish, maybe, give or take, maybe give about 200. Have you ever eaten somewhere that gave you food poisoning? Yes, uh, every time I've eaten raw challenges, I've got immediately sick afterwards, and the raw wings for a whole week or so afterwards, that was horrible. Uh, what you will see in my video with the hardest challenges and the times I've been cheated. Um, somebody says I like the videos, how long have you done these challenges? Uh, just about uh, uh, about two years, three months. What is your favorite kind of video to film? Um, one I enjoy, like enjoy the food. What's your favorite food to eat and what's your least favorite food? Uh, barbecue is my favorite and least favorite. I don't like cheese. Um, Somebody asked, what do I look for in a partner? That's a, a very interesting question. Um, so what I look for in a partner, you know, like we'll say, like, how do I make this not sound weird? It's gonna say on the inside. Does that make sense? What I, what I look for in a, in a partner that's non-physical is, uh, of like, is um, I'd say optimally like financial smarts. And like, I don't mean that in a shallow way, but I just like, you know, I, I, what I mean by that is like, I want to see them going places. There you go. That, that's a better way to put it. I w I'd like to see them going places. I'd like to see them with commitment, dedication, um, you know, for, you know, an individual uh, where I started to go with the financial smarts is like, if an individual works and then just blows all their money on drugs and alcohol at night, like that's not attractive to me. Like somebody who's smart with their you know, again, their doings, their actions, uh, responsible as a person, you know, kind of an adult. An adult is going places in life. Um, I would say those are kind of the first things. That, 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 that would be very, that would be a big thing I look for in a partner, like a responsibility, maturity, and going places. Um, how to be handsome like me. You gotta have, I got it from my mother. You gotta, you gotta have my, my mother has to have more kids. No, that doesn't make any sense. Don't do that. Why aren't you in major, on the major league eating website? Cause I'm not a major league eater. How do you prepare yourself for a massive meal? You'll uh, be able to watch that on my Patreon when I get that uh, series all done up. What do you look for in a woman? I guess we already asked this question. Uh, somebody says, what would you be doing if you weren't doing YouTube? Um, I mean, I'd still be doing the same thing I do. I like to help people. I like to entertain. I like to act. I would say actually to kind of backtrack, I'd be doing more modeling and acting if I didn't have the YouTube, like 100%. So I'd probably be more on that front. Where's the first place you want to travel? Southern United States. 
Will you ever compete in Major League Eating? Potentially, or, well, yeah. Uh, like, I mean, I've actually competed in a Major League Eating contest before, but will I join Major League Eating is probably what you're asking? Potentially. Will you collab with Katino Eats Kilos again? Absolutely. Or Zoom together, that's an interesting idea. Do you edit your own videos? Yes, I do. What's your favorite dessert? Uh, I really like pies and chocolate. Oh man, I just remember, I have a pecan pie in my freezer. Dang, I totally forgot about it. I would have had a piece. Shucks. Um, and have I ever traveled to Europe? No. Oh, I really been at putting two and ice cream and funnel cakes. What is your favorite challenge you have done? I, we kind of, we already asked that. Um, hi, Joel, have you ever experienced stomach pain because you experienced or ate a lot of food, like indigestion? Yes. What are you listening to when eating? Uh, when eating, it's very aggressive, bah, 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 like death metal. Does it help you concentrate? No, it helps motivate me. What's with your ear? I don't know. I have holes in them. If that's what you mean. And I have uh, additional hole in that one, right? In, I don't know if you can see it, but I have another hole there. I showed it before. Um. What's your feet size? 11. How many flushes? One. What's the biggest food challenge you've done pound wise? 20 pounds of ice cream. Um, somebody asked if I have a lot of flatulence after doing eating challenges. Um, I would say honestly, there's times where I've casually eaten like a couple pounds of cabbage or coleslaw or something or a large amount of beans or something like just casually and I would get an equal amount of flatulence as I do to like a challenge or something. So I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say so. Not overly, no. Somebody asked, this is a good question. Why do I eat a large amount of vegetables at a buffet rather than going to the meats? No, sorry. Rather than going all out on meats. Make your money's worth it. It's because you maintain a balanced diet. So, I mean, I don't know where, I, I, this is a great question, I, I don't mean this sarcastically, I don't know where you live, but here, honestly, vegetables are often just as expensive as meat. I want to go buy bell peppers right now, they're like $2.99 a pound, maybe like, a little, even some places a little bit more, and that's the price I can basically buy ground beef at. So, when I eat my, I eat the vegetables and the meats at buffets, because those are the most expensive items. Now, if I was eating just like pastas or I don't know, bread at a buffet, those are the cheapest items. So I, if you notice, I never eat those items. I go for the three most expensive parts. I go for meats, lots of meats, but I also eat lots of vegetables because you have my fiber and they're filling and they're low calorie. And then I go for desserts because all those three are the most expensive parts of the buffet and that's what I encapsulate. How many pickle peppers did Peter Piper pick? Uh, 32. Um, you, that's not a question. Um, somebody says, how do you do this daily? And I don't know what this is, but I mean, I eat every day. Um, I think most people do, but no, like I, you know, like I said, guys, I have uh, full days of eating. You can watch. I still eat larger quantities of food than the average individual, but I don't sit down and eat mass meals. I, and the, the foods I choose, I mean, like here I the only reason why I eat more than the usual person is because I like fruits and vegetables and they're satiating and I care about health and that kind of stuff. So if somebody's going to sit down and have like a Big Mac for lunch, I'd rather have um, some pork and a big salad and maybe a, I don't know, a corn on the cob or something like that. How do your parents feed you on the holidays? Um, so my my parents like again I, I eat realistically like it's not you know like i can go to family meals and i can go out for normal meals and eat them like a normal person doesn't mean they necessarily satiate me but if i go to christmas or something i'll eat i'll eat my fill gen or like at least enough to be pretty good or satiate me um like for example like in my parents home my mother uh they're not often dark meat fans so they're like my mother would basically say like you know Joel eat the dark meat or there'll be certain items where she'll say like Joel don't eat all the let's say sweet potatoes but you can finish the vegetables if you want 
you know, so, I mean, I work with them. It's not like I'm, you know, I'm a regular person. Like, I'm very respectful. It's not like I go there and just like, no, 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 no. And then like, screw you guys, no food for you. No, of course not. Like, I, I eat normally. Like, I just eat a bit more than the average individual. Um, so, in all reality, uh, apparently somebody's messaging me, but that is going through the 101 comments for this Q&A. So that, thank you everybody for watching. I really appreciate that. I think it's probably about 40 minutes of video. Um, I hope that was informative. Uh, I hope this was enjoyable for you. Um, I look forward to hopefully seeing you all soon, hearing from you soon again. Um, so what I'm leaving in two days. So, I mean, I'll be already be gone by the time this gets out or it's already passed, but I'm going to British Columbia and Alberta. And I really am trying to get down to the Southern United States. Um, Texas, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia, etc. cetera. Um, so I hope to make that happen, hopefully sooner than later. Fingers crossed, hopefully. Um, but yeah, that's about it. So that everybody, thank you for watching. Very appreciate, appreciate the questions, the comments. And until next time, you know what to do. Just live your life, be happy, healthy, be hungry. And uh, please stay safe, everybody. It's a crazy world out there.